How's it going, everybody? This is Ian Lenhart, aka Len Jones, coming at you live with my friend, Mr. Ayush Khanna. How you doing? Good, good. Did Excited to be here. Phenomenal time. I think the first time I met you, um, before we get into the fact that you know the COO, co-founder of Labor Voices was, I think you guys hosted a Tequila Friday. That is correct. And what was the theme for you guys? Yeah, so we had like four different team members from four different countries. So we had like four different uh, like countries and their beers. I guess. <laughs> that was that was our thing. Yeah. You gave me one of the greatest beers I've ever tasted. Oh, so. that's awesome. And that was. I, I don't remember. I have a terrible <laughs> short-term memory, but I just remember it was phenomenal, and I was like, "I got this guy's awesome. He's such Thanks. a friendly person." Thanks. So, guys, really pumped up to have him on today. Um, you know, Ayush has really had a sweet background. He's addressing a serious issue in society, and his company is really helping the world. And you don't really find that much people that are doing that that can, you know, put their you know their lifestyle in with their passion, which is super cool. And you went from freaking Wikipedia to PayPal to starting your own co build co founding company with some awesome people. And you have some of the best team chemistry I've seen. So, like, That's let's awesome. just kind of quickly, let's just go to what Labor Voices is, real quick, for anyone that doesn't know what Labor Voices is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you go to our website, we say crowdsource supply chain intelligence. So, I'll, I'll simplify that. Uh, essentially, uh, we go to workers and we collect information about their working conditions, and then we provide that information to brands and suppliers so they can improve conditions in factories. So we're all about you know eliminating things like child labor, forced labor, uh, safety issues, wage issues for workers in developing countries. Very cool, that's awesome. And what's really interesting about your story is what kind of triggered that. So tell me about the story regarding Bangladesh while you were working at PayPal that got you to start this, you know, this, that got you excited enough to kind of like dive into it. Sure, sure. Yeah, so this was around mid-2013. I was at PayPal. Uh, I was killing it, at least financially. And, uh, you know, I, I was really good at my job too. You know, I started off with like, you know, a, a team where I was managing like analytics for one product. And then I went from like one to two to three to seven. Uh, and I still had like, I was still hungry for like doing a lot more. Uh, and uh, what happened was in mid 2013, there was a massive factory collapse in Bangladesh. And uh, where were than, you when that happened? I was in it, I was here. I was in, I guess, you know, Silicon Valley. So you just uh, saw it on the news? I saw it on the news. This was in April 2013, and more than a thousand people died. And I was just really pissed off because, you know, these are people like, you know, these are people that are making like these shirts that you and I are wearing. And, uh, you know, it just didn't sit right with me that this we first of all, that, it, that this happened, like people let this happen. Like the, and, you know, this isn't like some rinky dinky, like, uh, you know, small, uh, uh, you know, clothing maker in Bangladesh that was cutting corners. These were factories that were supplying to big names like Walmart. Wow. And I was just like, hey, that's like, Walmart is like making billions uh, of dollars of profit off of like, uh, you know, these people that work in these terrible conditions and then like they die and then why a thousand people being, die. Yeah. And why, it, that's a really big number, isn't it? Damn. And, uh, and like, and why is no one doing anything about this? And, and at the time I was just really pissed. I didn't really know what to do about it. And a few months later I came across uh, Cole, who's my co-founder and CEO. Uh, and he, Shout out Cole. Shout out Cole, uh, and he, you know, he was kind of working on this. Uh, he'd been working on this. He had this sort of vision that he wanted to use mobile phones and the power of sort of worker input, kind of like how Yelp is, is something that we use today to, you know, like find out the best places to go eat For and sure. all that. Yeah. He kind of wanted to apply that concept to supply chains because he was like, hey, look, workers have supply, uh, you know, phones, and why shouldn't they have an input in, you know, what, you know like where they can work and uh, you know, why can't there be a glass door but for those workers who actually need better working conditions. So if I'm a worker, like I should be able to look around at all the different factories exactly. and I should be able to see like exactly. what the ratings are and, yeah. and, this is, and yeah. not just like go in blindly and get taken advantage exactly. of. Because that's probably what happens a lot, people exactly. get taken advantage. Exactly, yeah, if I'm a new worker who's like new to the industry, like why shouldn't I be able to know like what are the best worker rated factories around me? If That's I awesome. could always go yeah. to the best factories. And there's nothing like choose. that? There was nothing like there that? There was nothing like that. Wow. Well, now there is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that seems crazy because that's like, that's, that makes complete sense. Yeah. yeah. 
So you found that out and then you met with your co-founder and you got into it. So when you got met Cole, yeah. there was, you guys had like one customer, correct? That's right. So you guys yeah. were just getting started, just getting going. What does that kind of feel like that jump from, you know, being in PayPal, which is, uh, shout out Kevin Cosgrove, how you doing, man? Uh, what's that jump like being in something so awesome like PayPal, phenomenal company, making great money, having a lot of responsibility, and then diving into that no man's land of startup land, which yeah. congratulations for making it to 500 startups. Thank you, thank you. Super cool. But what's that jump feel like? It's crazy, you know, because like I used to think when I was at PayPal, I was just like, oh, I have so much responsibility and yet I have so much free time. Like I'm killing it. Like I could do whatever I want. And then you go into startup world and you're like, whoa. <laughs> you, you, you all of a sudden there's like a billion things to do and uh, you just realize that uh, you know you just have to keep doing them I think my you know the appetite that I described that I brought to the table at PayPal kind of yeah. helped me with startups too because you know I, I kind of like went from like managing like one product to seven products uh, when I came to the startup world it was kind of helpful me helpful for me because you know I started off in product but then I was like, hey guys, we need help in marketing too. Okay, so I'll do marketing now. And then I and realized, hey guys, like we there are like things we need to do on the operations side too. Okay, I'll do operations now. So I kind of just like went from like one, two, three, four. Uh, and it just like, it seems like my list of responsibilities keeps growing, but I guess that's part of being at a startup. But I enjoy it, you know, like I have this appetite. Like I wanna do whatever yeah, the hell I, I need to do. I know, that's to awesome. To make my business amazing, right? So there's a, pump, there's a question I wanna go on for that, but someone, uh, Trey said, what separates your business model from Glassdoor? is that it caters exclusively to working conditions in places that they don't cover? That's exactly what it is, right? We're, we're the glass door for people in the developing world. That's exactly what we are. You know, we, and uh, you know, we're going inside factories. Glassdoor doesn't really do that. Uh, also, Glassdoor, I have to say, like, we, we use them as an analogy, but they don't even, like, verify uh, that when you say you work somewhere, you actually work there. We actually do that. Like, wow. We make sure that if a worker is from a certain factory, then we make sure that they've actually... Was uh, setting up that verification process, you know, relatively straightforward? It was, yeah. I mean, uh, but obviously it gets more and more complicated because, you know, there's like job mobility and all that. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, it was like fairly obvious to us because, you know, we know people have identity cards and stuff like that. And we kind of use that. And what's really interesting is Glassdoor doesn't do that. Yelp doesn't really verify that you actually ate somewhere, right? So I could go on Yelp right now and say, oh, this place sucks if I don't like. Speaking of Yelp, yeah. I was watching a Jerry of the Day on Instagram, but not hilarious Instagram. And it was like one of the reviews was one star on this amazing mountain because it was too intense for me. I like gave him one star because it was too badass for you to go on. So you can't really always trust what you're yeah, seeing. Yeah. Um, so you have like this team and you, you brought it. How do you kind of manage the responsibilities of, of having a startup? Because like the biggest thing I see is there's so much things to do. There's so much people whispering in your ear telling you to go different directions oh, yeah, every yeah. single day. Everyone's bright. Everyone's brilliant. Yeah. Everyone has a different thing. But how do you kind of like, you know, take it, you know, process it and then make a move if that makes sense it's really hard honestly I, I i don't know like i i wish i could tell you that i had like a you know a solution to that problem i don't really i feel like a lot of the times it's uh i'd say there's two things that help you like part of it is like your gut like you know because like you know your business you can get all the advice you want but you know your business better than anyone else true uh so you do have to kind of go with your gut a little bit i will say one other thing though is that if you hear i mean one advice i would give to people is if you hear a lot of, uh, if you hear something that's like completely out of left field, like, oh really, like why would, that doesn't make any sense. Then you know what, what, I, what I would do is seek even more advice to see if you can get patterns. Cause like if you start seeing multiple people saying the same thing, then there might be some validity to that. Interesting, uh, and that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's the one thing I would say. So it's like the same thing with doing customer research, but you're doing exactly. customer research on the people giving you the yeah. high level execs giving exactly, you Exactly, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's some like, I don't know who said this, but there's like some sort of rule of eight, right? Where like every time you're looking for like inputs on some very specific thing, you're supposed to ask at least eight people in that field or something like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, one thing that you did, uh, you know, I used to do this class for everyone in the, in the batch and it was phenomenal. And it was basically on productivity tools. That's and right. like, I've never seen, like, when someone really loves what they're doing, they just light up, uh, like this 
Great, <laughs> great lighting we got going on here. Uh, by the way, happy uh, Casual Friday. You know, shout out to everybody Woo-hoo. out there. Casual Friday. Drop a Casual Friday if you're having a good Friday in the comments. It's always casual um, for me, but yeah. Yeah, yeah all good. <laughs> um, what were some of these, um, you, you gave all these productivity hacks. What kind of got you excited about productivity hacks in the first place? Have you been doing this uh, since you were young? Like, that's a great question. I, no, definitely not something that I was doing at young. I, I will say one thing. I think there's like one guiding thing, if, if anything. I'm a really lazy person. So I'm always looking for shortcuts and, you know, ways to get the things faster. Hell yeah. Uh, so that's always a motivator, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like if there's a way, like if there's text that I'm writing on my laptop every day, I don't really want to write it every day. I want to have a shortcut that'll write it for me. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, that's, that's I think, one motivator. I think that's what created the wheel a long time ago. <laughs> yep. I'm too I lazy, wanna I want to create a wheel. I don't want to walk, <laughs> so uh, I guess I'll just invent, invent this like rolling thing. Um, absolutely, and uh, I think, so lazy is definitely a big motivator. But also early on, um, you know, when we first started working on this, we had zero backing or zero investor interest or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, this was like in the really early stages, and so we kind of operated almost as a consulting company where you know we would we would get like these high dollar value projects, but it was like very custom to that one specific customer, which is normal for startups. Yeah, when you start off, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, so what was interesting was we were pulling in like you know good amount of revenue. But um, but investors weren't interested in us, and so we we had to basically be completely revenue back. Like we had no capital of outside of the revenue that you we know, had, right? We trapped the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So we had to be like extremely conservative with like with the with the little money that we were getting for customers, right? And so I think that kind of like really really forced us to be like super, uh, you know. Um, Super careful with our time, lean and, like, and productive, and yeah, all that. And that's where like all this love for like these productivity tools kind of comes from for me, and I think it's the same for Cole as well. That's awesome. I'm yeah. gonna have at the end of this, he's gonna give his top three favorites. Oh, absolutely. Uh, before I get into that, Trey had another good question. He said, "Have you had any pushback from parent companies that don't want you to tour their factories in some of these conditions?" <laughs> Gee, I wonder why that would happen. <laughs> that's a great. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Gray's actually a friend of mine, so uh, yeah. Um, he so parent companies. If he, if you mean brands, uh, then brands don't really have pushback. Uh, we do get some pushback sometimes from the factory management themselves. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. So you know, there's there's people on all ends of the spectrum. There are like the forward thinking suppliers who actually pay us. And they use us as a differentiating factor because they're like, hey, we're not like these other guys. We invest in like our workers' well-being, so you should work with us and you should give us more money and more orders and all that, right? We have those kinds of guys who are customers today. And then on the other end, we have guys who are like, oh, like why, why, why are they doing this? This is not cool. Or we don't believe this data. And then like the extreme end of the spectrum, we even have people who try to game our data. So what they'll do is like, uh, someone will like, you know, uh, record a lot of like uh, positive responses from like one account, thinking we won't catch that. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> or 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 you know like they'll they'll make like a lot of like positive, uh, you know, con- uh, records in a short amount of time. But like we're smarter than that. Like we've seen that happen. So you know we catch things like that and we immediately flag it. Question for you: Do you? Because on top of it, you're helping these you know big companies you know source factories that are compliant and doing all these things that are good for people and humanity and not using child labor and wage violations. Yeah. What have you come across factories that are using those and do you go out there yeah. and and aggressively try to expose those companies? Is that yeah. like another division of the company? Does that sidetrack you or is that kind of built into the mission of what you're doing? That's a fantastic question. So, um, our first responsibility is to the workers, right? Uh, and the thing is um, so I was just telling this to someone yesterday is I'm not doing like our social impact is not like oh out of the goodness of our hearts it's not out of philanthropy it's because we have to like you know the way we get this data is by speaking with workers and the way we keep workers is by promising them better working conditions either by way of improved conditions where they work or by guiding them to better jobs. We just kind of, that's that's our pitch to workers. So we just have to do that, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, I'm not trying to be nice, I am trying to run a business, that's why we're good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so, um, so 
So, you know, our first responsibility is to make sure that, you know, they get that information. If something is bad, then like, you know, they should know about it and they, they should know where they can go, right? That's the first step. The second step is we, we do release this data through like sort of back channels, either through like academic entities or stuff like that, so they can act on it. Now, we, we don't release the data directly uh, for a variety of reasons, but we are making sure that it kind of gets gets out there. Yeah. First to the workers and then elsewhere. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Like, woo! Get that positive feeling today, y'all. Like, we're making change. And Bobby, I totally agree. Just gave you the greatest compliment ever, by the way. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to Bobby Simon. Um, so let's just get into some productivity hacks real quick. Because, All right, so you know, well, on top of saving the world, you're making the world a better place. Let's talk about some of these hacks that you've used that everyone can use. Like, for example, the one with like changing my uh, computer to uh, mimic the sunlight yeah. has been cool. I've been I've implemented that. Um, that's awesome. And and any, anyone that's listening in, let me know if you guys have heard of these hacks or if you're going to implement them once he says them. So, what would yeah. you say if like your top three favorite just quick implementation hacks that someone could do to increase productivity? Oh, that's that's a without great your thing. slide deck, which is yeah, hard. without my slide deck. No, yeah. I mean, that, but but that, that's great because like that, those then I'm going to remember the ones that I care the most about, right? So I would say that uh, so some of these might be like I think. Uh, some of these might be Mac friendly only, so I apologize if there's like Mac haters in the in the listening audience. But uh, there's a couple that I really like. Though there's one that I find to be extremely helpful with like keeping track of my email. It's called Sorted. Uh, what it does is it kind of just puts a skin on top of your Gmail. It only really works with Gmail as far as sorted, like. right? Yeah, and it's just really simple. All it is is it kind of like shows up on top of your Gmail, and then it gives you these like uh, sort of columns. And it lets you organize your email. So, you know, you can use that to kind of like put your high priority stuff in a column and you can like put, you know, you can have like themes or whatever. And then uh, you can also like capture uh, action items on those emails without actually capturing them in the email. Very cool. And then that's free. Yeah, it's completely free. I think the base version is free. That's what I'm using. There's yeah. like other features, but For you sure. can get by with the base version. So that I find really useful if you number use Number one, yeah. number two. Number two would be uh, probably. Uh, Alfred. So Alfred is Mac only, as far as I know. What it is is it's sort of it's basically a search bar. Uh, it's kind of like it kind of helps you search for files and a whole bunch of uh, stuff like that. But it's a lot. It goes a lot deeper than that. It can integrate with like Google and your browser and stuff like that. And that I find to be very helpful. So for example, like you just fire up the search bar, and then you can you know see Google search results in the search bar without actually going to your browser window. Uh, you can search for like dictionary meanings, synonyms. Uh, you can do a whole lot of stuff without going to your mouse. And you, people don't realize how much time they will save if they just stop going to their mouse every two seconds and instead use that keyboard. Were you ever a gamer? I am a gamer. Oh, okay. All right, that makes <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say because you you're like, like uh, that's awesome because you definitely got that gaming background. That's yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Alfred number two and number three. What would you recommend? Number three. Oh. Um, oh, and by the way, Andrew, one hundred percent. Twelve different countries of spam. Yeah, <laughs> for, for sure. Uh, what would number that three be great. in your opinion? All right, number three. Uh, what would, what is number three? I'm trying. To, there's like there is. Uh, so I'm a little hesitant about this, but there was a productivity tool that I was using, and the company recently went under. <laughs> but but I think what they have said is the product is still going to work. And uh, it is a great tool, so I will still recommend it. It's called Saint, and it's spelled, I think, S-A-E-N-T. Uh, and the way it works is, uh, it's sort of like a distraction blocker. So when you start, uh, you, can, you can have these like 20, 25 minute work sprints, and what, we, what it will do is you, you can say, okay, like if I go to Facebook, like a giant red screen will flash and say, no, 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 go back to work. Uh, Damn, I need that. Right, <laughs> uh, and I think you can also block certain apps. So, like one of my like one of my uh, one of my biggest weaknesses is if I'm like uh, working and I'm not really feeling it, I'll just like fire up Steam and I'll start playing some games because I'm a gamer. So you can just like block stuff like that and be like, nah. <laughs> so uh, it, it's really good at like eliminating distractions a little bit and like helping you focus. Sick. Uh, Same. And I think the app is free. Yeah. I think there's another one that's like get shit done or something like that. Or there's another one. Yeah. That, I think like, there's a few. Yeah, Zara there's, there's is telling me about that. Yeah. But that's cool. Yeah. Just yeah. to force yourself to get your work done. You know what I mean? It literally sets a timetable on how yeah. long you can be on Instagram. Because sometimes we 
just get so like 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 sometimes I find myself just wasting time like going through an Instagram, Absolutely. which is not gonna show me or teach me anything, but it's like I'm programmed to just be like boom boom just yeah. like running through the apps. Yeah. So that's like really cool. Yeah, what yeah, game yeah. do you play, by the way? What's your favorite game? Oh, my favorite game. That's easy. That's Counter Strike. Have oh, you, have or, you heard of it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been like a huge fan of that game like since I was like in my you know in like. From like over ten years ago, when they like the first version came out, I've been like really into it, and then I kind of forgot about it for maybe four or five years. Yeah. And then about two two and a half years ago, I kind of got back into it again. So, and now it's so different because now like there's like professional gamers and stuff. Yeah, and, like, you can be a professional gamer. The ecosystem gamer. is so different now. We were talking so with Jordan Tayer from yeah. uh, he's like a kind of like a professional gamer in a sense. Nice. Doing that and like it's crazy like the lives people can make now through YouTube streaming yeah, and all yeah, that I stuff. That. Like I love that. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just give power to the people. Definitely. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys play Counter Strike in the comments. Shout out. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna kind of like sort of wrap this up. Sure. But there's a couple questions that I love to ask, and and, and the, the key thing that I love doing is connecting good people with good people, and like you're really good people, and you never know who's gonna watch this that could potentially help out on your mission with Labor Voices and sure. and overall. What do you think is like the biggest challenge you face running this startup? I mean. Like you get told no so many times yeah. throughout the day. Yeah. Like that's the probably the hardest thing about running your own company. It's just no, no, yeah. no. Gonzalo says it great in that interview you watched. He said, um, I am in the business of being told no. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I need to be, I need no. It, it, I need no. A that's lot all of I no. Yeah. So wh what do you think kind of gets you through those rough patches when you don't have any cash and you're right. just getting started and, and right. that kind of keeps you moving and in that direction yeah um, I mean it's obviously very hard and uh, I can sit here and pretend to say that like I knew how to deal with that but I didn't always know how to deal with it you know uh, it was hard for me especially coming uh, you know coming from that like world of PayPal and the security that it affords you for sure to this like new thing uh, it was hard for me early on uh, but you know what I found early on was uh, you know you kind of just you just get in the trenches and you try to deal with it. Uh, and what happens is every a consecutive no hurts less. That's the biggest lesson, I think. You know, like every the, consecutive no hurts less. Hurts less. That's what it is. You know, it's just like the dating game. You know, the, the first time you ask a girl out and she says no, you're like, oh. Yeah, you're like, I suck. Right. right. And then it happens again and again and again. And then like, yeah, okay, cool, yeah. whatever. I'll just ask someone else. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. true. The numbers game. You can't. It's, Totally a numbers game. Um, and uh, so that's one thing I would say. And I think what happened to me over time was that it really also helps you search within yourself for like how passionate you are about something. Because you keep, if you keep hearing a lot of no's, you're just like, you could just be like, you know, it, it's a good test of your own passion for something. Yeah, and if you wow, find that that's after awesome. You, right, because if you hear no a lot of times and if you still uh, feel uh, strongly about it, you're like, screw that. I'm just gonna keep going. It anyway. almost seems like it's like society's way of, of validating your passion too. Exactly. No matter what, you start a new business, if you start um, just changing direction in your life, you're gonna get a lot of negative feedback from everybody and everyone. And exactly. A, a lot of it's just because of the nature of the game. People don't like to see other people kind of yeah. succeed or they just get uncomfortable seeing people make different moves. So society will always push back. And it's just to see like how serious are you about it. Exactly. Because like once you actually get over that hump and you're exactly. like, no, this is me, this is what I do, this is who I am, then yeah. people like accept you. Yeah. And then it's just off to the races. Then it, then it changes. Exactly. It's like it's almost like the presidency, right? Everyone just craps on whoever the president is, no matter what, for four years, but then after they're gone, everyone's like, ah, oh, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. No, I don't know if that's a good example. Uh, it might, yeah. might have not. Might have not. Maybe, maybe not a good. Yeah, that's not, not maybe not this one. We're we'll going in the past. Um, but yeah, so that's super awesome, man. You're you're working it. You're making moves. Um, what's your future plan? Where do you see Labor Voices being in the next, you know, two to three years? Uh, great question. Uh, I mean, so I really want to make this something that is like an everyday tool for workers. That's where I want us to be. So what I mean is, you know, like just like there's a Facebook and there's a Twitter, we just want to be like a platform that workers use. We, you know, like we, we, we think we can be like this Glassdoor LinkedIn type tool for workers in developing countries. Uh, that's where I really want us to be. Uh, and, you know, today we work with like mainly the apparel 
sector, yeah. but we want to expand beyond that to like electronics and automotive. And I just want us to be sort of like, you know, the tool for the factory or farm worker anywhere. Love it. Love it. Hell yeah. Any last words for anyone out there trying to pursue entrepreneurship or trying to, you know, get started on their dreams? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I will say like, yeah, you just got to think about two things. You got to think about if you want to get started on something, you got to think about two things. One is, <laughs> um, you know, uh, what is your financial situation? Uh, and, uh, you know, because you, 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 people never talk about that. They're just like, oh, follow your passion and it all's gonna, it's all going to work out, bro. True. Great point. <laughs> but, but no, you, you got to start with that. Uh, you know, I was, uh, as hard as, as it has been for me, uh, you know, because I was at PayPal, I was, you know, able to save a little bit of money and that has helped me through like the really hard times. And if I hadn't done that, I probably would have quit a long time ago. Wow. So, you know, so you gotta just, you gotta think about that. That's one thing you gotta think about is like, what does my financial situation look like? Am I going to be okay? For example, in the, like, this is like worst case, but you gotta be like, Hey, can I sustain myself? If I'm just starting out, can I sustain myself for at least a year? Yeah. without having any source of income because that's a very harsh that could actually happen right yeah totally that, so I would start with that and the second thing is you just got to make sure you're really passionate about it you, you don't do a startup because you think it's going to make you rich like that's not how it works uh, startups do make people rich but the people who it does make rich are the people who are really passionate yeah, and it's a very few, very yeah. few, just like in anything else. That's in life. right. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. The success stories are the you know the ones that you read about on TechCrunch and all that is like those zero point zero zero one percent, right? The rest of us are just like out here in the trenches, fighting, fighting, fighting. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's major yeah. keys right there. Like I, I know personally, and in, in my background with direct sales, you know, I went full time in direct sales well before I had that cushion, yeah. and it caused me financial stress. And I was yeah. twenty one years old. I was young, so I had I didn't really understand that. So like. That hits home for me, yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, before you're gonna dive in, sometimes people say, you know, you gotta dive in because you gotta make, the, there can't be a plan B, you know, there has to be plan A, but make sure that your plan A isn't giving you a heart attack on day one, you yeah, know what I mean? Make yeah, sure yeah. make sure you can really focus and do that. So. Yeah, and like having that plan up front, like actually is gonna make it a lot easier for you to execute plan A, because then you don't have to worry about going to plan B, because you're like, oh, I've already thought of that, so why don't I just instead focus on plan A? Right? Absolutely. As opposed to not having a plan and then just being like, oh crap. Cool. So hey guys, how can uh, how can everyone contact you if they want to reach out to you? Uh, uh, you know, we're on label, uh, we're on the internet, interwebs, <laughs> the series of tubes. <laughs> uh, Laborvoices.com, uh, Twitter, at Labor Voices. Uh, I'm at A-Y-U-S-H-K on Twitter. Oh, I guess and we're on Facebook. So yeah, find me on Facebook, Ayush Khanna. I think you probably tagged me in the... I did, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, definitely hit us up and... Uh, if you, you know, if, if you think like child labor is an important problem, you may not, then <laughs> if you do think it's an important problem, yeah, then uh, let's chat about how you can help. Awesome. That's awesome, guys. Thank you guys so much for jumping in. We appreciate you. If you're watching the replay, make sure you guys are putting down some awesome questions. Joseph, That's my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, 50 Shades of Ayush over here helping out the world. Uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, catch us live tomorrow. We have some other things going on the next week. A lot nice. of cool people. And you'll ch uh, catch the YouTube replay because now we're... Um, oh. Uploading all these videos on YouTube, you'll get Dude. in about two days or so. You're on syndication. I love it. We're doing it. We're making it live. <laughs> so with that said, guys, we love y'all. Keep it real. Peace out. Bye, everyone.